Hey everybody and welcome back to the Whiskey Cove and on today's episode we'll be reviewing Buffalo Trace's Wella Foolproof. Run that video. Okay then folks, so before we get into this review, just a couple of things to mention here, just a couple of quick things. Go over to our YouTube page after this video and check out some of the whiskey reviews, some of the content that we're putting out. We're putting out store halls, whiskey tours, uh, blind battles, a bunch of fantastic stuff. So go and check that out after this video. And also hit that subscribe button if you like what we're trying to do as we help continue to build this community grow as we're still a very new channel here. And if you enjoyed, today, I mean, if you enjoyed today's video, smash that like button. So then let's get into the review. This is Well of Foolproof, the original wheated bourbon uh, made by Buffalo Trace now, previously made I believe by Stitzel Weller. Uh, now this is coming in at 57% alcohol or 114 proof. If we take a look at the bottle here, we have a really beautiful kind of royal blue color on the front with some really nice gold etching. Again, kind of like the Well of uh, font is a very it kind of pops when it's on the shelf here uh, it says full proof then and again it says kind of like the proof there for a full proof or a cast strength product it is 57 percent it's not as crazy as maybe some of the other products out there some of the other barrel strength ones but it is definitely getting up there 57 percent i think this is probably more in line with kind of like the regular proofs for cast strength at the time this came out i feel like a lot more lately we're seeing some really high proof like hazmat stuff come out just because i think more people are interested in that now than they were when this originally came out and as you can see behind me i have a bunch of different wellers unopened as well i've been trying to collect them all so i can do start this channel and i can kind of do a blind so we can see exactly which weller i prefer because i've never tried the single bar all the cypb i've had up there so i really kind of want to blind them and see just how good they are to the rest and ideally i would love to be able to do it with william luru weller which is kind of almost impossible for me to get that maybe i might be able to trade some samples to be able to get that for a blind bell but let's just wait and see and as soon as i'm able to hopefully acquire that if not i'll just do it with a bottle as i have already so if we look at the bottle this is uh, again this is a very typical weller bottle in this kind of the glass design is exactly the same as the rest of them the only difference between the regular weller bottles is obviously some of them have different colors but the cork is a little different on the weller 12 and the special reserve it's a screw cap and then on the rest of them it's uh, it's all a real cork actually it's an, it, this isn't a synthetic cork it's a it's a nice real cork there which is pretty awesome kudos to uh, weller for that or buffalo trace and let's pour ourselves a glass and then get into this whiskey. It's a nice full glass right there. So then, immediately, kind of like the color. It's look, looking more of like a mahogany color here. It looks super oily and viscous, which is always a really good sign when it comes to whiskey. And of course, as it's more cast strength or as a higher ABV, you usually get the whiskey is a lot more viscous or thicker. Okay, then let's nose this whiskey. So my immediate reaction to the nose is you get this beautiful sweetness straight away up front. It's a very caramel, rich vanilla forward nose, kind of a rich vanilla cream. And you do get a little bit of that kind of like Buffalo Trace wheated cherry note that you get from most of the Wellers that I've tried. And then you are getting some kind of subtle bacon spices there with kind of like the cinnamon right is right definitely right there i'm getting I mean, i'm getting a little bit of proof but it's not kind of like the proof that's going to like singe nose hairs or take away from any of the other notes it's just enough kind of proof to amplify a lot of the notes on the nose but not too much just kind of detract away from the ethanol burn as well there okay then folks let's give this one a taste so straight away, I'm getting a really great mouthfeel. A full coated experience is super oily on the palate. Coats your mouth, beautiful. Not too hot as well. This is my first whiskey of the day. I'm for 57% alcohol. I'm saying it's not too hot, so it must be very drinkable. Let's go in for another taste. So I'm getting that rich vanilla note coming through again. Like it was on the nose, it's coming straight through the palate. I'm also getting kind of like those burnt sugar notes that are coming through here. 
it's kind of very reminiscent of kind of like a creme brulee with some burnt brown sugar on. You are getting a lot of those barrel characteristics. There is some like dry oak notes here on the palette. Let's see if that kind of sticks around here for the finishes as we kind of explore that a little bit more here. So on the finish, it is a very long finish. It just kind of keeps going and going and going, but it definitely changes as the start of the finish towards the end. At the start of the finish, you're still getting a lot of those sweeter barrel characteristic notes from the palette. And then that kind of transitions into bringing back the baking spices from the nose. I'm definitely getting some more cinnamon. I'm getting a little bit of kind of like a wheat grainy note there, like a really small amount, nothing too offensive at all. And a little bit of caramel sweetness. So it's kind of like a, uh, like a cinnamon caramel bread uh, like that you can buy. It has like a dusted brown sugar and cinnamon on top. So it's kind of has that sort of note to it there, which is beautiful so far. That creme brulee note has kind of gone away more into kind of like the darker kind of burnt flavors and more kind of the creme brulee note is kind of stepped away, I should say, from kind of like the custard vanilla notes, more so to the kind of burnt brown sugar notes and the kind of like that deep kind of burnt caramel note. It kind of finishes then with a lot of oak. Uh, that kind of is a really pleasant, I, I really like a nice dry oak finish because it really rounds out the bourbon really well and it kind of gives the image that the bourbon has a bit of age as well. So it kind of rounds out and it makes it more of a complete whiskey. So let me just go in for one more taste to see if there's anything I've missed here before we get through to the final remarks. You know, it's hard to really believe that this well, I guess, or a lot of like Weller Antique 107 and Weller 12s was just kind of sitting on the bottom shelves for years and years and years. And it's only since, you know, the bourbon craze for the last 10 or so years that well has become a much more recognizable brand. And obviously anything Buffalo Trace is very difficult to find. But this definitely, definitely kind of stacks up to any wheated bourbon that's available on the market right now. So kind of like my final thoughts on this, I believe I paid $69.99 for this retail. I think retail is roughly between $50 and $70. So that's obviously right on the money there on the price. It being a Buffalo Trace product, it doesn't really need any marketing. You know, the well and the name sells itself. It's a very sought after bourbon, a very difficult bourbon to find, that's for sure. Especially the fall proof. I feel like in order of the difficulty to find, you have the special reserve, the 107, the 12, the full proof, and then the CYPB, and then probably the single barrel, and then the William LaRue Weller. So this is kind of right in the middle of the road in how the difficulty it is to find. Obviously, if you're able to get one, I would say I wouldn't pay more than $150 for it because personally, I probably would prefer Stag Junior over this. Even though that Stag is not a wheated bourbon, if I'm gonna put my money towards something, even though I really like wheated bourbons, I would probably put it more towards a Stag Junior. So the most I would pay for this is probably $150 if it's your first time get, being able to get one of these. I'd probably max out at about 120. I know I think on secondary, these are going between like two and 200 and $400, which is obviously pie in the sky and crazy numbers but try to stick to that pricing guide I give you. You know, if it's your first time ever, ever been able to find one of these, I think 150 is a bit of a push, but I do think it's worth it for you to enjoy, share it with friends and open it for, up for a good occasion. With that being said, what score would I give this out of 100? So on this channel, zero to 100 is our score. I think I would give this a solid 85. I think this is a great bourbon. I think it's a fantastic and excellent bourbon if you can find it for MSRP. Obviously, we're not judging it on secondary prices because Buffalo Trace and this whiskey has no control over that. So I, I need to judge it or I need to kind of review it for the price I paid. And I, I think 85 is a fantastic score. Value for money, again, going off the back of what I just said, value for money is, is an A plus, isn't it? If you find a well full proof for MSRP between 50 and $70, I don't think there's many bourbons out there okay yes stag juniors are around about the same price eh taylor single barrels are around about the same price let's have a little look here uh old forester uh, single barrels are about 70 to 80 dollars as well and they're fantastic juice as well uh what else russell's reserve 13 
is around about the same price. So you're getting in that sort of category where you have some really great whiskies as long as you're able to find them for MSRP. And obviously that's the most important part. And if you can't find them, then go to a good bar, a bar you, that you'd like to support and get a pour of this. I wouldn't pay more than $20 for this at a bar, but you know, it just depends on you folks out there. Just because I don't, wouldn't pay something for it doesn't mean you wouldn't pay something for it. So the, the whiskey is worth ultimately what anybody is willing to pay for it. So with that being said, Thank you for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this. We'll continue to do more reviews as we move through the channel. And we also continue to do a lot more different other episodes. So keep up to date with that stuff as we drink through the world's whiskeys one glass at a time. Cheers.